Foreign Minister uh, Wang Yi is, uh, by ranking, possibly in the upper echelon of the Chinese Polit Politburo. Uh, he is a very high uh, official of state in as far as the Chinese leadership structure is concerned, possibly ranked third or uh, thereabouts in the structure of the Chinese hierarchy or Chinese government. Uh, <coughs> Uh, although we were not the uh, principal source or uh, principal point of visit to the Pacific, uh, he stopped and uh, ran through the Pacific uh, nations. Uh, and we are privileged to have received him. He is a, a minister in the Chinese government. Today, as we speak on record, China PNG relationship. Uh, is solid and strong. In fact, uh, since 1976, we've always upheld uh, the one China policy. Long before the present contest that is taking place, the geopolitics of today that is taking place uh, at 1975 76, through the wisdom of the fathers of our country, uh, our foreign policy fundamentally has been friends to all, enemies to none. And in respect to our bilateral relationship with China, we've always held one China policy outlook. <clears throat> and today I just re-echo to him that our, our, our policy view has uh, not changed today and uh, will not change into the future uh, without me predicting what the future outlook will be. Uh, this is uh, because of the foundational policy we have in our country that we are friends to all enemies to uh, China PNG relationship cannot be compromised or sabotaged. It's a very important relationship we have. Today, in my meeting with the foreign minister, uh, I do, did acknowledge that the Chinese economy uh, buys a lot from the Papua New Guinea uh, economy and what we produce here. Uh, on record, the substantial trading balance, we export more to China than we import from China today on record. Uh, that cannot be ignored. I had to give acknowledgement where it is due for them to picking up more of our exports, especially in the primary <coughs> producers. But my meeting today with him uh, was more focused on our economic relationship. I did give him assurance at the government to government and from a political context, our relationship is static and fixed, but I want to expand uh, substantially in the economic relationships. Uh, we, Papua New Guinea, under my watch and present generation of leadership, uh, do not believe in being just uh, rent collectors. We want to move strong in the area of downstream processing, add value to our producers in our country, create more jobs in that space. And so, just like I went to Brisbane uh, the other Monday and invited Australian businesses to come into Papua New Guinea to partner us in the downstream sector space, exporting finished coffee, exporting finished uh, cocoa producers, exporting finished copra producers, exporting finished uh, timber producers, exporting finished gas and oil producers, or exporting finished uh, mineral producers. That's the way uh, my generation of leaders are shifting for our country for the next 10 years. No more, and I gave him uh, assurance and indication to the foreign minister that Papua New Guinea the next 10 years are shifting towards downstream processing of our natural resources. And so just like I informed the Australian marketplace and Australian businesses, I said, Foreign Minister, through you, I want to, you to inform Chinese businesses on our focus in the downstream processing sector. And for Chinese serious investors to come and partner our local businesses, whether at the landowner level, or at the provincial government level, or at the national government level in the national entities we have, in ensuring that our fish, our timber, our agriculture is processed and we export the finished products back to your markets or back to other international markets. So our conversation this morning will predominantly focus on the economic aspect of our relationship. China and Papua New Guinea uh, officials are going through a tidying our Chinese PNG uh, free trade arrangements the specifics of the free trade arrangements are being finalized as we go through so that Papua New Guinea's interest is not suppressed or harmed, but maintained. And in fact, uh, 
augmented in that arrangement so we could produce here and sell back to the Chinese market, which is, by the way, the biggest market in terms of consumer needs uh, when they have 1.5 billion people back in China. So it was in this context that we had a fruitful meeting today. And uh, I, I, I thanked him for coming here in our country. Uh, wished him all the very best in his travel back uh, to China. Uh, he did extend an invitation for me to visit China uh, uh, into the not too distant future. I did indicate that we have an election process. Whether it's me or anyone who sits in, in the desk that I sit on, of course that invitation will be placed on the table after August for PNG's leader to pay a visit, a state visit to China, and in the context of entrenching the economic relationships we are trying to elevate into a higher level, and as I said, in my interest, bring in the downstream processing businesses in our country partnering local entities to sell finished products back to China. So I'm happy with this uh, conversation. Some politicians feel that we cannot be meeting uh, other foreign leaders at this point in time. Uh, contrary to this, the country is still functional. There's an executive government in place. The work of the executive government still runs. Uh, and executive government is in the interest of promoting our national interest. And chief amongst what I promoted inside, just like what our foreign minister did, was the business to business and economic aspect of our relationship. Uh, in the election period, uh, myself personally and Prime Minister's Department and Foreign Department would tailor a uh, foreign policy outlook so that every nation that we relate with, in fact, Papua New Guinea is fortunate to have relationship with very strong economic powerhouse countries, globally speaking. Our relationship to USA, the uh, glo uh, globally ranked number one economy. Our relationship to China, globally ranked number two economy. Our relationship to Japan, globally ranked number three economy. Our relationship to South Korea, glo globally ra ranked number 10 to 11th economy. Our relationship with Indonesia, globally ranked in the top G20 nations. In fact, later this year, Indonesia is hosting the G20 meetings in Jakarta, and Papua New Guinea is invited to be with there as observer on the margins of that meeting. Uh, our relations with the Philippines, our relationship to Singapore, Malaysia, uh, we live in India, of course, the fourth biggest economy. So Papua New Guinea and our foreign relationships will no more be just about politics and security. We will move big time into the economic space. For other nations who want to have a good, vibrant relationship with us, uh, pick the agenda of downstream processing of our natural resources. Companies operating outside and want to come in, downstream is the way to go. Companies already in country will give first opportunity to foresters in country, fisheries in, those already in country, fisheries sector or forestry sector or agricultural sector. You pick up government's interest in the downstream value adding aspect of our, of our economy and we move into this space. And today, my conversation with China uh, foreign, foreign Minister is similar to my conversation to the Brisbane Business Forum. Uh, we want foreign investors to come in and partner local companies in the area of the downstream processing sector of our natural resources. So it was a good meeting. Uh, he did uh, go, uh, went away with uh, warmth and uh, the well wishes from Papua New Guinea for him himself and his and his leadership and we put it straight to him we focus on the economic relations with you that must get bigger better going forward into the future. Mr Marpe, are you concerned at all about PNG and other Pacific Island countries getting caught uh, in amongst the the geopolitics and, and the power plays between bigger nations? Uh, I'll put it this way someone's enemy is not my enemy someone's enemy is not my enemy there shouldn't be any enemies in this world Papua New Guinea's fundamental foreign policy has always been friends to all, enemies to none. And we will maintain that foreign outlook going forward into the future. And as I said, the, the element of my relationship with foreign nations now going forward will be strictly on economic relations. We want to maintain our specific aspect of political relationships and sovereignty relationships. Uh, it's more economic uh, relationship these days. Uh, in the meeting inside, we never ask for any uh, any any aid or 
Danny Grant, we were strictly converse, conversing on uh, foreign relations, uh, I beg your pardon, economic relationships. Uh, and Natalie, the, uh, the latest contemporary East and West debate, so to speak, uh, really, in my view, uh, is no brainer for Papua New Guinea. Papua New Guinea is in the middle of the East and West debate. In the heart of the Indo-Pacific, Papua New Guinea is. But in Papua New Guinea, we are an equal playing ground for everyone. Uh, as, I, as I indicated earlier, in the course of this election period, uh, I will dovetail a specific foreign uh, policy blueprint that strictly uh, gives Papua New Guinea's role in the entire Pacific region and the entire, entire uh, East and West debate. And will be anchored on the French to all and the philosophy. At 1976, when uh, uh, which we, we signed to the One China Policy Outlook, there was no debate within East and West. If history tells, in 1976, there was a greater relation within the USA and China, so to speak. Uh, Papua New Guinea still maintains that One China Policy Outlook today. Uh, little did the fathers of our country in 1975 and 76 knew there'll be a East and West divide in the 2020s. Uh, and so I think the, uh, we were blessed by the wisdom of the fathers of a nation back in 1975, 76. Uh, today, this, this uh, uh, policy is, is, is not changed. And uh, I want to uh, encourage those who are outside. Uh, the world will be a better place if we don't talk about it, including China and, and the other side of the divide. Let's maintain each other's sovereignty. Let's uh, maintain each other's, uh, uh, respect each other's sovereignty and maintain each, uh, the friendship that we have in the region. The world will be a much better place if people talk about peace than war and contest. And Papua New Guinea in a small ro role going forward into the future. Uh, we'll encourage uh, the different relationships we have in the region to work together and coexist. So long as we don't overlap into each other's sovereign interest, and we coexist, and uh, that really, to me, is the way to go into the future. So uh, today's meeting has nothing to do with Papua New Guinea's relationship with other uh, bilateral partners we have. It was strictly, purely based on uh, our PNG China bilateral relationship. We limited our conversation to just PNG China relationship. Uh, had, uh, while the uh, foreign minister did pass through the Pacific, we limited our conversation to just PNG China. Uh, the conversation between PNG, I beg your pardon, Pacific and China is a matter for the Pacific Island uh, Forum when we collectively come together. Today's conversation was PNG China relationship that has been anchored since 1976 when we signed the One China Policy. I think the Chinese leadership acknowledged this and I point to them. Let's now build more on business to business and people to people that changes. And the focus was for me, the biggest winner for me was this indication that he will look into the downstream business space in a big way. Uh, the same invitation is open to all who uh, have a good bilateral with us. General businesses from the West, general businesses from the North, uh, general businesses from wherever you are, come into PNG, pick up the downstream sector space. We add value to our resource in our country, create more jobs in our country, and, and build our economy going forward. And just one final one, sir. I, I, um, I had been told previously that uh, there might be a donation of some equipment to help support PNG's security forces during the election, perhaps some body armour, some gear to, to help with resourcing. Um, was that discussed or is that the case? Uh, in my meeting uh, with uh, myself, there, that was not discussed. And for any body armour or uh, security related matters, as I said, I'm tailoring a, a, a foreign policy. And all our foreign relationship will strictly stick to the economic sector. Uh, on security matters, Papua New Guinea government will take full responsibility. If it means us securing body armor, etc., etc., there will be no grants, whether it's from China or Australia or India or Japan or USA, Papua New Guinea government will buy any foreign, any, any security related matters. No more grant or donation from anyone. And so is that happening? Are those uh, are you purchasing some, or is there any discussion around that? There was no discussion in my meeting. Uh, if it were, has happened, and it possibly happened elsewhere, but uh, as I give indication, any security-related purchases uh, will be purely done on 
commercial basis where our police, our defense, our CIS will be procuring through the normal way. Uh, this will be part of the conversation where whether we buy it from Australia or Indonesia or Philippines or China or Japan, uh, we are out there shopping to assist us, our security personnel to be equipped and uh, it will be purely on purchase basis by PNG government. Prime Minister, could you shed some light on uh, a couple of MOUs that were signed today? Uh, some, some details on, on those MOUs. Uh, the, the, uh, this expanded on from my understanding with uh, the reach with the Chinese Prime Minister when I was in, in China. Uh, we, uh, like for instance, our fisheries produce now. We've signed an uh, understanding with China, so all our fishing produce can now have access to the Chinese market. All agricultural produce can have access to the Chinese market. It's a big market. That is where my emphasis is. And uh, other exchanges in the technical spaces uh, where we have uh, PNG students going there or Chinese uh, or uh, the Chinese technical people coming to assist us. I think at a technical level they're working on this. The foreign minister would have informed the press and we will get a detailed uh, release out to uh, the country when our team and the Chinese embassy will sit down and work on what was secured with them and what was agreed upon by two sides. Uh, it's a healthy bilateral relationship we have, just like we have with other nations around us. Papua New Guinea is privileged, in my view, to be in the middle of these big economies. And we will not compromise our relationship, one, 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 one relationship over another relationship. We'll try to the best ability maintain all relationships without compromising our key national principles. All right, thank you very much.